What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking another look at the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G about a year after my original review and going over whether or not it's still a good phone to buy at this point. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, Let's get into it. So with the A53 5G, despite this phone being about a year old at this point and having a really good successor out now, I feel like especially with the current deals you can find for it, this phone does actually have quite a bit to offer. For the display, we're getting a six and a half inch, 120 hertz Super AMOLED display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 405, and a 20 by nine aspect ratio. So definitely a good display here in pretty much every way. At six and a half inches, yeah, it's not the largest display you can possibly get, but I do think it is a good size. I mean, I wanna say the average smartphone in 2023 is about six and a half inches and for good reason, because on one hand, it's not so big that it's uncomfortable to hold or anything like that. But at the same time, if you're gonna be on your phone a lot doing lots of content consumption, whether you're watching videos, reading, no matter what you're doing, with this display size, you will get a pretty good experience. And with a 20 by nine aspect ratio, we're also getting a pretty tall and narrow form factor. And this means if you're doing something in landscape mode, like looking at photos or watching videos, for example, you're gonna get a real nice immersive experience. Things are gonna look a bit more cinematic and especially since the bezels are decently thin, things are gonna look really nice. And then if you're doing something like reading or browsing the web, using social media, anything that involves scrolling with a form factor like this, you can fit a good amount of content on the screen without having to scroll too much. So overall, the size and dimensions are great here. And the image quality is also really good as well. With the 1080p resolution, we're getting a real sharp, clear image, and with the Super AMOLED, the colors are nice and vibrant. The display itself is really bright, and the viewing angles are also really good too. So if you're outside in the sun, for example, compared to something like an LCD display, the A53 5G is going to be real easy to see. And if that wasn't enough, with the 120Hz refresh rate, the movement on the screen is going to be pretty fast and smooth, making the device overall feel a lot more premium. So in general, if you're looking for a really affordable 5G phone that has a really nice display, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G is going to be a great choice. Now for storage, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G is getting 128GB of internal storage with micro SD card expansion, and keep in mind, there is also a 256GB variant, but the one you're commonly going to find, especially through US carriers, does have 128 But either way, for a mid-range phone, we are getting a ton of storage here, and for the average user, 128 will be perfectly fine, especially if you use a micro SD card. So in general, if storage is important to you, then this phone will be a great choice. For security features, this phone does have face and lock, like pretty much every A-series phone, as well as a nice in-display fingerprint scanner. So let's give it a try. There we go. One more time. And there we go. So as you can see, real fast and responsive. And again, this phone does have face and lock too. So if you want to use that instead, you always can. Now taking a look at the camera setup here with the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G, we got a real nice looking hole punch design for the selfie camera. This camera is 32 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with the 64 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 5 megapixel macro camera, and a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera. So in general, as far as camera features go, for a mid-range phone, the A53 5G has pretty much everything. So if you like taking a lot of pictures and maybe you want a wider variety of features, this phone will be a great choice for that. And when it comes to video, we also get some flexibility here because with the A53 5G, it can record 4K videos and not only the rear camera, but the front camera too. So if you are recording a lot of videos and you wanna get that higher resolution, then this phone will be a great choice for that too. And when it comes to image quality, this phone is also really good. Not quite as good as a much higher end device like an S21 FE for example, which is definitely something to think about because nowadays, while the A53 5G is a lot more affordable than it once was, entry level flagship phones like the S21 FE, Google Pixel 6a, and even the iPhone SE in some cases, those phones do have significantly better cameras than this. And when it comes to the price difference, yeah it's there but it's not really that crazy. So if you really are taking all kinds of pictures, maybe that's something you do for a living. Maybe you're a content creator, for example. In that kind of situation, while well, this phone will definitely get the job done for around the same price at this point, there are some phones that are a bit higher end than this that will do things a little better, but I feel like for the average user, the photo and video quality we're getting here is gonna be plenty good enough. Now to give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. Definitely great quality here. And for the average user, while well, it's not quite as good as an entry-level flagship phone, again, something like the Google Google Pixel 6a or the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is going to be marginally better, but if you're just taking a couple photos here and there for something like Instagram for example, or sending photos to friends and family and stuff like that, this phone does do a great job and it will be perfectly fine for that kind of use. 
Now when it comes to RAM and processor, with the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G, we're getting 6GB of RAM with the Exynos 1280 processor. Now the overall performance is definitely good here. On one hand, it's not really lightning fast, especially if you're going to be on your phone all day, doing more demanding activities like mobile gaming for example, and I'm talking like Call of Duty type mobile gaming. Something like Angry Birds I'm pretty sure is going to work on any phone, let alone one like this. But if you are doing more demanding activities and you're more of a power user and you're just going to be using your phone all the time, then yeah, you might want to spend a bit more and get something a little faster than this. But I feel like for the average user, for things people typically use smartphones for nowadays, it will get the job done just fine. Now I did run a benchmark test on this phone using Geekbench 6 and here are the results I got. So I do recommend running this test on your current phone and then comparing your results to these. And that's going to give you a better idea of where this phone stands performance wise compared to your current device. Because depending on what you have, it may or may not actually be an upgrade. If you're coming from something like a Samsung Galaxy S10 for example, I can't remember off the top of my head what that phone's score actually was. I don't even think Geekbench 6 actually existed last time I used it, but in general I feel like the S10 is going to be quite a bit faster than this. But on the other hand, if you're coming from something like a Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G 2021 for example, something a bit older and maybe not quite as premium, then this phone is most likely going to be a pretty solid upgrade. But again, for the average user, regardless of what your current device does, if you are looking for something for more basic to moderate activity, Activities, and you're going to be on your phone a decent amount, but maybe not doing stuff that's super demanding. In that kind of situation, I do think this phone will be plenty fast enough to give you a good experience. Now the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G is getting a 5000 mAh battery. This supports 25 watt fast charging, so definitely a great battery here in pretty much every way. The only thing it's really missing is wireless charging, which definitely isn't really a necessary feature. Sure it's convenient, but unless you're always traveling and maybe you want one of those wireless battery packs, in any other situation, wireless charging is probably not going to be a game changer, more of a convenience kind of thing. But regardless, even without wireless charging, the A53 5G does have a great battery. With the 5000 mAh battery, in the US at least, this is pretty much the largest battery you're actually going to find in a smartphone, and as such, the battery life is going to be great here, so if that is more of an important factor for you, then this phone is definitely worth considering. And with 25 watt fast charging, the charging speeds you get with this phone are really good, so you're not going to have a problem there either. But keep in mind, in case you don't know, to actually use the 25 watt fast charging, you will actually need a wall adapter that's at least 25 watts. And also keep in mind, this phone doesn't even come with any wall adapter, let alone one that strong, so you will have to get one yourself. But in case you need one, I will be linking to my favorite fast charger in the video description, so definitely check that out too. But in general, if you are looking for a phone that has a really good battery, you're definitely not going to go wrong with the A53 5G. Now for the software, the A53 5G does have Android 13, and with Samsung software support, you can expect to get several other major updates in the future. So if you do want to get one phone and keep it for a while, but you still want to make sure you have the latest version of Android throughout that time, this phone will be great for that. In addition to this, the A53 5G does also have NFC, and this is great if you like to use tap and pay. Now taking a look at the overall design, definitely real nice and modern looking, not really that premium per se, especially since the back is made of plastic. But as far as build quality goes, it is pretty solid and it definitely doesn't feel cheap. So with that combined with the fact that most people are probably going to be using a case anyway, even though this phone definitely doesn't have the most premium materials, especially compared to its successor, the A54 5G, that actually has a glass back instead. I feel like it's still completely okay and the phone definitely doesn't feel bulky or anything. So compared to a lot of other phones in this price range, I do like the design we're getting here. But one kind of disappointing drawback here is that with the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G, Unfortunately, this phone does not have a headphone jack, so if you do have a pair of normal wired headphones, keep in mind, to use them, you will have to use an adapter. I feel like when it comes to budget phones, this really doesn't make sense because yeah, flagship phones haven't had headphone jacks for a while, but with a phone like this, I feel like taking away the headphone jack really serves no actual purpose, so definitely too bad to see, but unfortunately, that's just the way smartphones are going these days. And at this point in 2023, having a headphone jack is definitely a feature you're going to have to enjoy while you still can, because I'm pretty sure that in a couple years, no phone's going to have them. So in general, that is really too bad. But in conclusion, my general thoughts about the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G about a year after my original review, despite again being over a year old at this point, and having a really good successor, as well as several other really good alternatives. Despite all this, I do think this phone still does provide quite a bit of value. Now, there are several things to consider, like, again, you can easily get a phone like the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, or a Google Pixel 6a, or any number of entry-level flagship phones for around three, four hundred dollars And because of this, I feel like if you really want high-level performance and a really high-quality camera, but you still want to pay more of a mid-range price, while the A53 5G is still a pretty decent option, if that's really what you're after, you can still technically do better. But that being said, for those of you who are really just looking for a solid mid-range device, especially if you're coming to a new carrier, because I know carriers like Cricut and Metro for example,
example, do have some real good deals on this phone. In that kind of situation, if you really need something for more basic activities that does have a really nice camera, albeit not the absolute best in the world, but still nice enough for daily use, and you want good performance, but maybe you don't need the fastest phone ever. In that kind of situation, where you really are after a solid, affordable mid-range device, but you're still not really expecting too much, I do think the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G, even a year after it originally came out, is still a great choice that's absolutely worth considering. But this concludes my one year review of the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.